Today on Locked On Canadians, there's a lot of Arbor narratives out there and we are going to debunk some of them. Your Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 1171 of Locked On Canadians. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. My name is Laura Sab, also known as The Active Stick, and I'm joined by the wonderfully Boisvert. We're going to break down a lot of Arbor Talk today. Ian, are you ready? Always ready. We get a lot of flack for not being Arbor Jack Eye supporters. Eat your heart out. We are going to uh, <laughs> say a lot of nice things about Arbor Jack Eye today. Right. But first, we have to get to something. The Canadians finally strung two wins in a row together. On a back-to-back, Ian, when is the last time the Montreal Canadiens were able to win two games in a row? February of 2023, which doesn't seem real. (laughs) I didn't believe that when you told me that. Um, I I could swear it was like, you know, just last season, uh, which... Nope. Nope, it was two seasons ago. All right, the Canadiens were really bad. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) uh, Let's talk about those two wins real quick. We have a lot of time to spend on Arbor. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a lot about Arbor Jack Eye in that first segment because there's so much to talk about. And then in our second segment, we're going to do our weekly recap where we talk about the week as a whole and what the Canadians were able to do, put together, etc. And then we're going to have our weekly forecast for this upcoming week like we do uh, every Tuesday. So uh, also, if you missed our last episode, please check it out. There's a lot of Michael Hage talk and prospect talk with the lovely Hattie and Sebastian of Locked on NHL Prospects. All right. Let's talk about what, like, where do you want to start with these two wins, right? 5 2 against St. Louis. Uh, oh my God, I'm forgetting the score. Is it 4 1 against Philadelphia? 4 3. 4 1. 4 3 was the final. Yeah. yeah. It was 4 1. <laughs> um, all right. You almost know uh, that's bad for us. That was bad this time. <laughs> <laughs> that was almost bad for us. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, let's start with a narrative about Arbor Jack Guy, right? So leading up to that game against St. Louis, there was a lot of talk that Martin St. Louis hates Arbor Jack Eye. Uh, he said some really strong things about Arbor Jack Eye, I think, uh, talked about him needing to be better, etc., what he wants, his expectation. Arbor's not a rookie anymore. He has, you know, they asked about, like, you know, why does everyone have a long leash except Jack Eye? And Marty said, well, this is his third season in the NHL. Everybody else is really young and they're rookies, etc. Um, but I think that this is not the first time that Martin St. Louis has said things like this about a player. It's just, it feels like because it's Arbor Jack Eye, we've all of a sudden forgotten every other time, like Josh Anderson. I don't know who else. Like, this is not the first time for sure. No. And, you know, he sat out a few games and then pulled back into the lineup with, with all of the injuries. But people seem to forget that the last two seasons, they had a defensive rotation. They had eight guys playing defense, and two of them were always sitting at some point. It was, you know, him, Kovacevic, Harris, Barron. All of those guys were sitting at some point in time. Um, I thought that the, you know, the the Marty hates Arbor Jacki narrative was so silly. Um, I think the the temperature in the market was just just right for it, where we were looking for some way. We, you know. This market has been looking at ways to villainize Marty St. Louis over the last little while, whether it's... Well, his, they weren't his... winning games. <laughs> right, they weren't winning games, and then it was, oh, his defensive system stinks. Oh, why isn't he playing Arbor Jacki? I think the reason he has such a, um, you know, a, a short leech for, for Arbor Jacki is because he knows the kind of player he can be, that we and we should not settle for anything less than that. Again, this is a good thing. That's a it's a good thing to feel that way about this guy that Marty thinks that there's more to this player and that if he's not giving that, well, that's that's on Arbor and good, credit Arbor Arbor Jack guy. He came back that game against St. Louis. I thought he was phenomenal in that game. Him and Struble made a really, really good pair. It's a shame one of them can't play right handed because otherwise it might be something they do regularly. Um But, yeah, I, I think that all of that gets put to bed with a pretty solid weekend for Arbor Jack guy. But. Of course, the 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 big news with Arbor Jack, I started at the beginning of that Philadelphia game. Uh, what did you see on that play? 
Okay, so I I didn't catch it live. I was getting ready to watch the game, and in the group chat, uh, we got this message going, what the F is going on with this game? So immediately, I ran and, like, rewinded on my PVR. Um, and I didn't... I, I, I thought that Arbor Jack guy did everything he was supposed to and everything correct in that moment. And he was the only one that got penalized. And I thought like, that's like, like I was like, this is the narrative that we, we have about Marty hating Jack. I like that's the refs right there. That's yeah. the. <laughs> yeah. And you know, so playing, play the whole play out, right? So Kirby doc is coming across center ice. Sean Couturier, the captain of the flyers finishes a blind side hit a little high. I didn't really see a ton of contact, to be honest. Doc throws his head back because that's something you instinctively do when someone buzzes the tower. You don't just sit there. Um, he goes into the corner. Jack guy just grabs him and is probably saying like, hey, don't do that again. And just holding him. And then Couturier is kind of just looking reluctant. And then he Couturier drops his gloves first. Arbor drops his. They're about to start throwing. And Nick Sealer comes flying in with his gloves off. And jumps Arbor Jacka. And in that moment, you can see the referee in the corner point at Sealer and do the you're out of here motion like he was getting tossed from a baseball game. And then they skate to center. The referees skate to center and they have a lengthy conversation and they say Arbor Jacka is the only one getting the penalty. What the is way the Mike... definition of third man in? I just I want to know. Okay. And this is, this is why the referees decided what they decided. The, a third man in can only be called if there is a fight in progress, they did not give Arbor Jacquet or Sean Couturier a fighting major, even though anyone with, with half a brain could tell you that when the gloves hit the ground, they're fighting. They don't do that for no reason, but they used a very, a very manipulated way of reading that. And they decided, well, because those two didn't get fighting majors, what Nick Sealer did is not a uh, third man in. Okay, fine. Let's take that approach. Then why was Arbor Jacki given an unsportsmanlike conduct for grabbing a, a so you know a, an unwilling combatant when Nick Sealer grabs an unknowing combatant and gets nothing? So even if, without the third man in part of this, it 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 falls apart on its face. It makes no sense. Mike Johnson was so spot on on that broadcast. He, he looked like he was about to mind. leave. He was like, he was so angry. <laughs> I, and I don't blame him. He was going to quit his like, job on the spot. He he played it out perfectly. He said, look, it should be fighting for both Jacai and Couturier. And Sealer should get the game. Because that's what it says in the, in the, the uh, third man in rule. It's a game misconduct. And I think that's part of the reason why they didn't call it. Is they go so early in the first period. He didn't really get him. So kicking him out of the game feels wrong. So instead, Philly gets a power play. Like it doesn't make any sense. It it like it's frustrating for this league. When how how long have you been watching hockey, Laura? I don't know, like 23, 24 years. Yeah, long time. Why is it that we feel like we're stupid every time we watch this game? It shouldn't happen. It's so funny because like, and you were just talking about about it, and I was like, this is the exact same thing we always complaining uh, complain about. Don't let the game get out get out of hand. If yeah. you officiate in this way, everybody's going to be going out there taking cheap shots at each other, or like you know, like stage fights for no reason. And it just like to me, it makes me crazy. Sidebar: you... Mike Johnson, one of the best broadcasters. I love him. Uh, yeah. So good on the Has broadcast, and you know, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> It sets a horrible precedent, doesn't it? Because what it what it sets is, okay, if you see your teammate and an opponent about to square off, as long as they don't throw a punch, you can jump in and cold cock the, your opponent and it yeah. won't be a penalty. That's the go. precedent they set with this game. So when Arbor Jacki does that in a week, the He's only people to blame trouble. here were the guys on the ice <laughs> in Philadelphia. And it was... It was We'll get into it in the weekly recap because it's one of my favorite parts of the week. But the rest of that game, the Canadians were better. That mm -hmm. that galvanized them. So, yeah. you know, another F for officiating. There's two Fs in officiating for a reason, I guess. They're they're just they're always terrible. It was the first time in my life that I thought that one of them had money on a game. Like I was legitimately like, like, how do you make a call like that? That's insane.
the thing is it was egregious right like it wasn't yeah. it wasn't so it was so egregious like you did a math in order to get away with not giving a guy you know what i mean yeah like it's like it's so funny like how are you not supposed to think that if that's the way that they handle the games all right um as we know, the NHL is broken, their rules are broken, their officiating is broken, but you know what's not broken is the Montreal Canadiens finally winning. Um, and we are going to talk about that and what was the reason, what was the winning formula for the Canadiens and can they keep that going? And that's all coming up next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets. If you win your first $5 bet, that's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. This episode is also brought to you by Game Time. What is Game Time? I'll tell you. It is one thing that will make buying tickets so much easier. This is going to take so much grief out of your life because you will be able to find tickets to events, live events happening near you, no matter what kind of event and no matter how soon, because you can get deals right up to the day of your event. And Game Time is an app that has it all. You can see the view from your seat before you buy. They've got the lowest price guarantee. They've got so many deals. And honestly, the best thing that I like about it is that you can toggle a feature and see all in pricing so you get no surprise fees at checkout. Um, Like I said, you can get the lowest price guarantee. So here's what I'm going to tell you. Next time you have an event, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-H-L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. All right. So I just want to share with you one thing. Right now, as we are recording this, the Montreal Canadiens are tied in the standings with the Bruins, the Red Wings, the Toronto Maple Leafs, and the Buffalo Sabres. They're one point ahead of the Ottawa Senators. But the crucial thing is all of this without having won a single game over the course of two whole weeks. Yeah, it's wild. I, I, like half the league is 4-4-1. Four, four I, I don't understand how it happened, but we are all exactly Gary Bettman 500 in that we have, <laughs> you know, we have a point percentage of 500, even though we've technically lost more games than we've won. Um, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, we were talking about, you know, Marty talking about how they're in the mix and are they back in the mix with these two wins? I think at this point in the season, it's been pretty clear that there's a lot going going on that we don't understand. Like, why are the Calgary Flames good? Everybody predicted yeah. they would be bottom feeders this season, right? What's going on with the Colorado Avalanche? But I also really enjoy that in Toronto, they're throwing jerseys on the ice. It's a little early, but... All of this means that the Canadians, in spite of themselves, can continue to be in the mix for a while because their division is not doing all that great. Yeah. And, you know, we all have to play each other, right? Like, it's going to be a war of attrition in the Atlantic division. So, you know, Montreal threw a lot of points away um, to start this season. You know, the we st- if we're starting our weekly recap, that starts with the game against the Rangers, which you just crumple up and throw away and forget it ever happened because the, the nothing of value happened in that game. Um, I beg to, to differ. I think a lot happened in that game in that the Canadians learned the difference between being a good team and being a terrible team. Yeah, they got humbled. Marty said so. They got humbled. Yeah. 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 Um, Suzuki had two goals in that game. That was about it, right? That was about uh, the only fun part of that hockey game. Um, they then go uh, and take on the Blues at home. They win five to two. Um, they spread the offense around quite a bit. Um, every uh, every goal was a unique goal scorer. Evans Doc got his first since 2023, which is just really awesome for him. 
Cole Caulfield continues to just put the puck in the net in a way that I don't know that we've seen in Montreal in some time. Um, I don't think we're we're talking about Cole Caulfield a lot. I don't think we're doing it enough. No, <laughs> like, we are absolutely he's not score talking like forty five goals. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Somebody somebody in our comments I think said 50, 50 goals. I was like let let's let's tone it down a little bit. There are slums uh, slumps, but I think that it's possible that he's going to hit that forty goal mark and. Also, if you look at Nick Suzuki's point per game pace, well, it's more than a point per game. I don't know if he's on pace for 90 points, but I think it's entirely possible that he hits it. Yeah. And he called himself out, right? At the beginning of this week, he said, I need to be better. And then he just was. Or two was goals. Just, <laughs> yeah. Well, and, you know, for that reason, like, I have him as the star of the week for the Canadians. He, oh, uh, yes. That's a thing yeah. we're doing now. We're doing yeah. a new thing. <laughs> Three straight multi point games for Nick Suzuki. Six points in the three games this week. Just he he flipped a switch and he was a better player. Like, I, you know, a lot of that's just getting the results, you know, because sometimes you get you have the right process and don't get the results. He's doing it all right now. He's been fantastic. And that that line has come alive with him, which yeah. is all you can really ask for on a team that, you know, without Patrick Liney is, let's be honest, a one line hockey team. There you go. And part of that line is injured. Um yeah. Right. So, or, or part of their ideal first line is injured. So uh, for the listeners, we are going to, every time we do a weekly recap, we're going to talk about one turning point moment for, you know, like a TSN turning point, but this is the lockdown Canadian turning point. So it's per week, not per game. Um, and we are having one star of the week and you guys can also like, let us know, you know, during the weekend, et cetera, in the comments, who you would like to be the star or who you think should be the star. Personally, this week, I agree with Ian, but I have made it a point now to like disagree with at least one thing he says every recap show. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I would like to give an honorable mention to Cole Caulfield. Uh, but turning back to the week, I think, you know, Kirby Doc finally getting that goal. Do we think that's going to allow him to kind of settle down? Um, it seemed like it did because he played a great game against Philadelphia. You yeah. know, he, he looked like he was all the way back which is great news for the Montreal Canadiens, not only as we're waiting for Uri Slavkovsky to get healthy, but, you know, once he does get healthy, he'll go back down to the second line, and now that line will have new life again. Exactly. Uh, so it's exciting. It's exciting. You know, we knew he was going to have a long on-ramp, but with a player like him, it's sort of, he just needed the right moment, and things were going to go his way. Yeah, and we're talking weeks, not months, right? We thought it would be months, and we're talking weeks now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I thought, you know, going back to what we talked about in the weekly forecast last week, the Blues game, I said, take care of it at five on five. Special teams will take care of themselves. They won the game three to two at five on five. They did it right. They they added a power play goal and an empty netter. They didn't give up a penalty, uh, a power play goal. They did it. The Flyers, I said, get to the goalie early. I said, Erson and Fedotov are bad. And then neither of those guys played. It was uh, Kolosov and he was also bad. So it worked. Um for me, the, the moment of the week, though, is the penalty kill that followed the Arbor Jacki penalty for doing the thing everybody would have done um, and Sealer jumping in for no reason. Because you could hear it on the ice. The players were mad. They were mad during that penalty kill. They were yelling. They were barking at the referee at every moment they got. Former uh, NBA player Rashid Wallace uh, coined the term ball don't lie, mm -hmm. where he would take a foul. And then the guy would miss the penalty, the, the foul shot, and he would yell, ball, don't lie. That was a ball, don't lie moment. That was like, a puck, the, the, not lie. Or I they, guess stick not lying. <laughs> yeah. And then they immediately scored after that penalty kill. And it was sort of a, yeah, okay, they they did the thing that we needed them to do. That, yeah. to me, is the moment of the week. So I, I really i am glad that you pulled that one uh, from the moments because what it does show is that there's two ways you can be angry. You can be angry and lose your head, or you can be angry the Nick Suzuki way, which is calmly be ruthless, right? We've seen Nick Suzuki do it in the past. He gets challenged. He gets angry. Instead of losing his mind and making mistakes or drawing penalties, like he's just stone cold and he shuts it down or he scores a goal or, you know, he embarrasses you. I think this is the exact same thing. Like it's the exact same mentality that these, this, these players have learned that it's okay to get angry as long as you channel it in, in a way where you play really well. And I know there's a lot of debates about toughness and things like that. And I don't think necessarily by doing that, you're not, you're, you're not, you're not being weak, you know, sorry. I don't think you're necessarily being weak by doing that. 
you mm-hmm. are being tough. You're just doing it in a different way. Like there's a place for like bruising and there's a place for just being cold. And I love to see them play cold like that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And they have to take advantage of their opportunities when they get them, which, you know, at the end of the week, the Canadians are top eight in special teams. Their power play is eighth in the league at 25.8. Their penalty kill is third in the league at 90.3. Like, and do you remember the like three weeks before the season started where every day we talked about how bad this, this special team was Marty was be? right. I, you got it. What are you going to do? You got to tip your cat to Marty. He said, we didn't show him anything. And he was sure. Right. We saw nothing in the preseason um, and they look great. They look great on the power play. They look great on the penalty kills. So good. Now they got to figure out five on five again. I agree. And and so like, maybe we just trust Marty with this defense, uh, the system yeah. thing. <laughs> like, yeah, maybe he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Like may- maybe a little, um, but also for me, the, the just real quick, cause we do have to move on and talk about the weekly forecast. Uh, for me, the moment of the game was actually after that Rangers game. It was after that Rangers game. I think yeah. they kind of realized that this is not a joke and they have to take it seriously. And just because they're not an ideal roster and just because they don't have the world's most experienced coach does not mean they get to mess around and throw this entire season away. So I thought that was really, really interesting. So in the St. Louis game and a little bit in the Philadelphia game, they leaned on the things they knew they were good at, mm-hmm. uh, which I really, really appreciated. All right. Sure. In our next segment, we're going to talk about our weekly forecast, and we also have trivia. And in that weekly forecast, is there a possibility that the Canadians can really, really put together enough wins to make us happy? And that's coming up in just one moment. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Price Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, Price Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Price Picks. What I really love about it is that it's so, so simple, and Price Picks puts their members first so with all all the withdrawals are fast, safe and secure. When my picks hit, I can get my money in as quick as 15 minutes. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It is guaranteed. Price picks is the best way to win real money this hockey season. Which players are going off, which ones aren't? Make your picks in less than 60 seconds and turn your sports opinions into real money all season long on prize picks download the app today and use code locked on nhl to get 50 dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup i'll say that again download the app today and use code locked on nhl to get 50 dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup prize picks run your game All right, it's weekly forecast time and also almost trivia time, which is like has become like my favorite part of the week or, or every episode. Um, weekly forecast. Ian, how are we looking? Three games on the schedule this week for the Montreal Canadiens. They start off at home against Seattle and then head on the road to face the Washington Capitals in our first rematch of the season against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So let's start with that game in Seattle because as you're listening to this, it's tonight. So uh, no time like the present. Uh, Seattle. Like I said earlier, there's like 20 teams in the league who are 4-4-1. and one. The Seattle Kraken are one of them. They are 4-4-1. and one. Uh, The Canadians last year, as we learned through a trivia question earlier, are, were 2-0 and oh against Seattle last year. A 5-1 win and a 4-2 win. Um, their goaltending, Joey Decord, is a 3-1-1 one one with a 294 goals against and a 907 save. And Grubauer is 1-3 with a 310 goals against and an 881 save percentage. So really, if you get Grubauer, you should, you know, Thank your lucky stars because Joey Decord is far and away the better goaltender there. Um, up front, they're led by Jared McCann, five goals and seven assists for 12 points in nine games. Jordan Eberle's still getting it done. Six goals in nine games for that guy. That's wild. I love that he's still going. Yeah. Um, what, do, what do you think is the, one of the keys to this game? What, do you, what are you looking for going into the game on Tuesday night? Honestly, what I'm really looking for is for them to start the game early and play 60 minutes, right? There's so many little things that we can pick on. You you know, you're talking about five on five, try to win the game five on five. We know their special teams are getting better. We know depending on which goaltender they put in there, there's a pretty good chance that they might get a good one, right? Um, But 
What we haven't seen yet, even in those wins, and something that has been consistent throughout the losses, they haven't played a 60-minute game. I want to see some consistency. There are going to be moments where the team is where the opponent is outplaying you, but that doesn't mean you get to take a break on effort. So that's what I'm that's what I'm really hoping for, not just for the Seattle game, but for the next few. I do have some other opinions for, for the other two games. But it's really for me, like win or lose, I want to see consistency. I don't want to see you play 15 minutes out of 60. I want you to I want to see you play 60 minutes out of 60. That's it. That's all yeah. I want. They can they can lose like 8-1. Don't do it, but they can lose 8-1. Um, and if they play consistently and they play really well and they just they don't give up the effort, they don't take their foot off the gas, I'm gonna be so happy. Yeah, the start to that Rangers game felt like it was all Canadians and the puck just kept going in for the Rangers. So, you know, like I, I completely agree with you. Right now, we're still process driven, right? Um, my key to the game is to keep winning below the hash marks. Um, all four goals against Philly and three out of the five against St. Louis came at or below the faceoff circle. Um, you're going to give up a lot of chances with the defensive system that you have. Not that it's a bad system. It's just that you're not great at implementing it just yet, which is fine. <laughs> Because most of you guys are still under like a hundred games played. They're all um, fetuses. Right, right. So so just outscore your problems. You this team has the the you know enough firepower up front right now to outscore those issues. Um just keep working the puck down low. Josh Anderson, let him go to work. And I think I think they'll be all right. All right. We headed to Washington next. Uh Washington surprisingly good to start the year. Five and two. Uh, Montreal was 2-1-0 against Washington last year, a 3-2 overtime win, a 5-2 win, and a 4-3 loss. Dylan Strom leads them in scoring. The Capitals have kind of turned over the roster as of late. He's got nine points in seven games. Um, and they have 24-year-old Connor McMichael, second on the team, with eight points in seven games. So just they're really turning over their roster to the next generation. Um, I'll start with my keys. I wrote no locals in that uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois needs to be silent. Mm -hmm. You need to keep him quiet. He loves playing Montreal. He has, um, he's it's tied for the most points he has against any team with Ottawa and Vancouver, tied with Montreal, 21 points in his career. Um, and potentially Hendricks Lapierre, he could make his Bell Center debut for the Washington Capitals. He's off to a slow start, zeros through seven games. Uh, he may not play, you he know what that means exactly. That's why that's exactly why I bring it up is he's going to score. In that game and make us all our family is going to be here at the Bell Center. Yep. We know yep. that. No That's why I bring it up. So no <laughs> yeah. locals. Shut yeah. down the locals. You'll be all right. Yeah. So my key was just control that game. Because I think, you know, you're talking about how Washington is surprisingly good. And I was about to ask, do you think that? Because nobody knows what Washington was supposed to be this year. Because that's where I'm at. And so I yeah. think like against a team that's such an unknown quantity, you're talking about turning over their roster. We're talking about them outperforming the expectations. People were like, they outperformed last year. And then they were really, you know, um, they were, they, they got disappointed in the end or they got humbled in the end. I think that's a better way to, to put it. Um, and then they made all these roster changes that everybody was like, what, what is your off season? Can you explain? Like, what is the game plan here? Yeah. What's your, what's, what, what's the thought process behind this? The thought process is apparently, you know, doing really well at the beginning of the season. So I think for me, the, the real key is control that game. And there's players on this roster that can take control of the game. I want them to do it. Yep, absolutely. All right, we're running out of time. So we'll go to Pittsburgh next. Current record, 3-6-1. and one. This, like I said, is our first rematch of the year. The Canadians dropped the first meeting 6-3 to three back on October 14th. Um, what do you have for this one? What are you looking for? It's a winnable game. Don't do what you did last time. It's literally just do the opposite of what you did last time. Yep, I have contained Malkin and Killer Instinct. This is a team that, the, as as we're recording it, the Pittsburgh Penguins have lost five straight games. You cannot give them an inch because they're you know they're going to be coming in hungry. They're going to want to win. They haven't won in a while. You you cannot give them that. So, foot on the gas, finish that game. You'll be all right. All right, all right. You want let's head to our trivia really quick. Where I have almost a slight apology to make because <laughs> I. Due to a technicality, it might have goofed on the last question. I'll reread it. Uh, Cole Caulfield has scored a regular season goal against every team in the league except for three. What are the three teams? Technically, there's four. Carolina, Winnipeg, and Utah is what I thought. But technically, you could say four because he hasn't scored against the Montreal Canadiens. So I guess that counts. So four. Um, I don't know that anybody got it because I kind of botched the question. So everyone gets a mulligan on this one. And I'll be better <laughs> next time. Everybody wins a point. Yeah, there you go. All, All right, right. Today's question. When was the last season the Habs had five players with at least 20 goals? Oh, I know this one. All right, repeat yeah. it. <laughs> when was the last season the Habs had five players with at least 20 goals? 
Good luck. You so, have the if you have the answer, put it in the comments on YouTube. We'll pin the first person who gets it right. Yes. You can also send them to us on Twitter. We are at L O underscore Canadians on Twitter. Please follow us there. You can also send it to us on Instagram. We're at Locked On Canadians on Instagram. I love hearing from people on there, like people answering the trivia question on there. I absolutely love that. Uh, also, just follow because you know we post clips and graphics and stuff like that on there. You can email us at lockedoncanadians at gmail.com. We love getting your emails. Please continue doing that. Please subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts as well as on YouTube. Please tell your friends if you like us. Rate, subscribe, all of that stuff. You can find Ian on Twitter at maybe it's Ian. You'll find me at The Active Stick all over social media. We thank you so much for listening and we will see you all tomorrow. Thank you.